So hey, welcome back everyone and uh, welcome to the last ride on this beautiful Triumph Street Triple RS. So I've had this bike for a week and put it through its paces. Uh, here are my final thoughts on this bike. Like with most bikes, there are things that I would change on it. And I mentioned in the previous spec video and the first ride, the bike revs too high. So first thing I would change is the rear sprocket. I think it's uh, far too big, far too high revving, even cruising speeds in six at uh, 70 miles an hour on a motorway. So that would have to change. The other thing that I'd have to change is the brake pedal. I still feel is lent into the engine casing a little bit too far down on my right hand side just here. And I find myself missing the brake. I've actually got my foot flat on the peg just now and then when I put my foot down I don't feel any brake lever whatsoever so I have to physically and it kind of awkwardly actually put my foot to the left to try and hit that rear brake the other thing I'm not too pleased about is the rev counter now I've got it in track mode just currently and it's showing the revs at the top of the screen which is good you can configure that in each of the uh, different screen options or modes but where the little line goes up the uh, the rev range it's very difficult to see and especially because i wear glasses for long distance everything else is clear on the screen but that isn't and i've noticed a couple of other vloggers have mentioned the same thing so the old 2019 street triple r and rs i think the dashboard and the rev counter was a little bit better and of course on to the last thing which is the indicators now as one of my subscribers mentioned you do get used to it i'm sure you do it's it's same with every every bike that i've bought over the years i've changed things to uh, slightly customize it to myself obviously that's not a part we can change but you just get used to it and because it is self cancelling indicators and that apparently works with uh, a timer or it works with the six axis imu and basically when you turn the corner and then the bike comes up right again and straight it cancels off so so that would solve some of the indicator issues one other person said that the joystick just here is actually underneath the indicators and it's quite hard to know which one you're pressing when you're not looking totally get that totally agree i think they could have uh, put that on the right hand side somewhere but other than that it's an absolute splendid bike now while it's high revving I mentioned in the other video they do a 660 version which is the same engine as the triumph trident i absolutely love the engine on the triumph trident and the gearing so i'm just wondering have they geared it differently they must have for the 660 engine and if the 660 engine works like the trident did and you wanted a more modern looking bike over the triumph trident's classic look then uh, then this is the bike for you and I would love to get a ride on the 660 version because I think it would be an all-round better bike. And I know that sounds crazy, this is higher CC. So yeah, so there's my last thoughts really on the bike. Uh, like any Triumph top of the range bike, it comes with all of the best bits from suspension components, Brembo brakes, Brembo master cylinder, I think it's an MCS master cylinder, fully adjustable brake lever, clutch lever, great headlights on the bike with the DRLs now the dashboard so configurable I think a little bit too much in some ways but I'm sure if you were an owner of the bike then uh, then you get used to it and customize it to what you want the handling of the bike is absolutely superb and at 166 kilograms dry weight you can just throw this bike wherever you want and it'll hold the corner With the Pirelli Super Courses on the, the bike as well, it's super sticky. So yeah, we're just going to meet Mark, my mate, just up at the garage just here. Uh, and I think he'll be on his uh, Yamaha RD350LC today. I'm not sure which one, he's got a couple. He's done a hybrid one, which is really nice. And he's got a full standard original one that's been renovated by himself. So, beautiful bike. It has featured on the channel before. And I think I'll be letting him lead the ride today so that I can smell that beautiful two-stroke. So stick around, stay tuned for that. And uh, we're just coming up to the garage now. Mm. 
So we're just following Mark now, heading up into the trough of Boland. He's on his original spec RD 350LC, all A Ridge. And the smell, I only wish you could smell it, it's absolutely beautiful. Perfect for scratching up the, uh, the back roads here. Plenty of corners, obviously it doesn't handle like the, the bike I'm riding today. But like Mark said to a guy at the garage, he said it handles like crap. The 350LC engine, he actually says it's more fun than any other bike he's ever ridden and uh, kind of takes me back to my younger years when I used to drool over those bikes. Plenty of other bikes out today. Oh yeah, and the sound of that thing's beautiful. I don't know where it's picking up on camera. And so I've managed to close my cuffs on my jacket today. With the extreme heat that we've had recently, I opened them up just to get some air up my sleeves. The problem is, is that I had a wasp fly up about four days ago and proceeded to sting me right on my elbow, which wasn't nice of him. At the time I thought, oh, there's maybe a, a thread of something inside my jacket, just felt like that, just pricking my elbow. And then, uh, lo and behold, next day my elbow's swollen up and has been ever since. Got it bandaged up with a load of cream in there at the moment. But it's extremely painful and because it's right on the joint it's uh, restricting my movement a little bit with my uh, my left arm. And of course in the jacket the hard elbow pads keeps pressing against it which is uh, which is not fantastic. And then yesterday I went and smacked my elbow right on the corner of a wall so that didn't help neither. So a little bit injured today, but uh, hasn't dampened the spirits. And I wanted to get out on this beautiful bike to uh, to give it one last ride. And how could you uh, refuse an opportunity to go out with a RD 350LC? Lots of cyclists out today. So if you're ever up this way, Trough of Boland, there's lots of these little roads, side roads that go off to uh, middle of nowhere. It's good to explore. So it's nice that it's actually cooled down because the heat we've had over the last couple of weeks, as you know if you live in England, has been uh, a little bit unbearable during the day. And it's just like me to order a mesh jacket, which arrives midweek next week. And then the weather will turn cold again, but it's actually meant to be coming back hot again by the middle of next week, so let's see. I think one of my subscribers, David, I think it was you, you asked a question about the quick shifter and you were saying is it totally clutchless then? Well, I think from uh, first to second, changing up, I, uh, I'm using the clutch because obviously it's a longer travel for the gears to go from first to neutral to second, but after that it's really smooth all the way up and I find it even smoother on the way down and even going from second to first with a quick shifter on the down blip there's no problem no issues there so just one time with the clutch 
going up the box from first to second and then that's it I've been trying out the different modes obviously not rain because we've had no rain for what seems like ages although it is raining down south today I believe and I've put it into track mode today yeah the bike feels absolutely planted the suspension doesn't seem too stiff on track mode but it's absolutely perfect for these roads you couldn't really wish for a better handling bike and with it being so light as well I think this could be the uh, the perfect bike it's got a lot of pull a lot of horsepower probably one of the best handling mid-range bikes you get a lot more bike for your money than say a Yamaha MT-07 and it's just so well equipped I don't know how Triumph do it for the money while an MT-07 is probably just a tad over seven grand okay you're paying ten grand for this one so this is the 765 version but I think if you go for the 660 version which you can use with the A2 license with a restrictor kit I think you're down to about 9k so two grand more for a great handling bike best components you know Brembo M50 monoblock calipers fully adjustable brake and clutch levers fully adjustable suspension that you don't get I believe on the, uh, the MT-07 six axis IMU all the riding modes all the gizmos great tyres Brembo discs Olin shock on the rear it's just got everything absolutely everything so for two grand over an MT-07 it's a no-brainer really if you were to buy all these parts these extras separately it would cost you more than that and the brakes are so good literally one finger braking and of course if you buy the extra module for the connectivity to your phone I think the uh, younger generation would like that and the throttle connection paired with the the beautiful smooth quick shifter it's just a pleasure to ride really is a good bike would I buy one I would probably go for the 1200 to be honest the speed triple and we'll be having that on loan so we can test that one soon hopefully but yeah, I'd be interested really on the speed triple to see how it compares to my MT-10 SP and really kind of put those up. I've ridden the MT-10 SP now for over three and a half years. So it'll be interesting to see how that bike pairs up, matches up to it. Certainly on brakes, it's, it's well equipped, better equipped than the, uh, the 10 SP. And price wise as well, I think they're pretty similar at about 15 grand now for the, the speed triple. 1200 RS and the new or this year's current MT-10 SP is actually around 15.2 I think it is now considering three years ago when I bought the bike I think I paid 12 and a half K added a few extras maybe 13 and a half K quite a bumpy road this so apologies if my voice is all over the place okay different tarmac so what have we got on the channel next week well we've got the Bonneville T120 coming along and I'm looking forward to getting on that. I rode the original uh, Street Twin Bonnie, the mini baby Bonnie. And then I took the T100 out a few weeks ago at Triumph. And I quite like the T100. And that was a 900cc. Whereas the T120 is the 1200 engine that's in the Thruxton. Now if you watch my Thruxton videos or any of the first rides of the Triumph we have a playlist up for all the Triumph test rides and first rides, spec videos and things go and check that out, I'll put a link to it just here but yeah I love the Thruxton so much that I was very tempted to uh, get my money out and buy one and I think it was only the sort of uh, racy seating position that would put me off not that I would use it for a bike that I would uh, tour on or you know do long journeys that thing just looked beautiful and uh, if you want to see that bike just head on the uh, last couple of videos you'll see it absolutely stunning bike but I think the Bonneville T120 
is going to win and tick more boxes for comfort on the bike and it's still a classic and it's still an awesome looker as well so stay tuned for that next week look forward to putting that one through its paces so yeah again to sum this bike up I think it's one of the best handling bikes on the road today they do do different models I think it's priced right for the gear and the equipment that's on this bike I think it's got some of the best componentry on so if you're uh, interested in taking a look at this get yourself down to your local Triumph dealer and book a test ride I'm sure you'll not be disappointed so yeah I'm gonna enjoy a uh, lovely ride out with Mark on his uh, RD but yeah I think uh, we'll cut the video there I'll have a nice uh, nice bimble around the trough of Boland for the rest of the, uh, the afternoon and uh, we'll catch you on a, uh, a new video which will be the first ride on the Bonneville T120 next week so if you're not a subscriber get subscribed hit that subscribe button and ding that bell and then if you are a current subscriber thank you very much again for the support to the channel that you give and your comments every week fully appreciated so uh, yeah have a great week guys at work or whatever you're doing and we'll uh, we'll see you then take care